build guide. The build I'm gonna be showcasing today is a build utilizing the grace of the Supreme Heavenly Emperor. And it's a pretty powerful build. Might not be the most powerful there is, but the versatility in it is actually really good. And it's also really fun to play with because it enables you to basically use most of the spells. I think the only spells you cannot use with this build are the ultimate spells. So the level 40 in a virtue spells. But every other spell you can use. And it's really is to customize for what you yourself want to use. So let's get into the equipment. Now this build primarily of course utilizes the grace of the supreme heavenly emperor. Now it doesn't really matter which piece has which bonus on it and you can uh, mix and match however you feel like doing it. Now I have the grace on my three armor pieces and on my bows and for the gloves I have set bonus requiring negation. And as you can see the set bonuses are quite general as in they do not specialize in anything particular. They all just give you small general boosts. As in damage received, minus 2.3%, status effect resistance, divine beast gouge gain, and spirit attack damage. Now spirit attack damage is actually really good with this build because you end up racking quite a lot of spirit with this build and that is because of how the special effect works on this build now i'm gonna post a screenshot here on the screen to show and i'm taking this from a reddit post and i'm also gonna give credit to whoever did the testing on reddit and the other set bonuses i'm using on this build are Aspiration of Restoring the Han Empire, I have two pieces of this set bonus which gives you the three piece bonus when you have the set bonus mitigation thing on. And this is because with this build you will be deflecting quite a lot so getting a little bit of HP for every deflection is kinda nice. And it also works well with melee attack damage HP Restoration and Wizard Spell HP Restoration. So you'll be recovering quite a lot of HP. And then... Yeah, and of course why I have this par particular accessory also is... For the status effect accumulation on enemies. And this is also why I have one piece of Grace of the Shao... I don't think I pronounced it correctly. The White Emperor. And it also gives you enemy status effect accumulation. So combined you'll get an extra 11% enemy status effect accumulation. Which goes well with this build. Which I centered around trying to proc status build up on enemies. For special effects... It's just whatever you prefer like to do. For weapons I put status effect accumulation, sp spirit vulnerability 
on hitting a martial art and HP restoration when you deflect a critical blow. I prefer that HP restoration out of all of the ones and I consider it to be maybe the strongest since bosses will use quite a lot of critical blows against you. And then the spirit vulnerability of a martial art is really easy to keep active all fight because you end up using quite a lot of martial arts. And then status effect accumulation is just nice to have this build works. And the same, I have the same and special effects on both weapons with the exception of ice enchant on my dual swords while melee attack damage on my sword. I prefer the enchant but this melee attack damage is also really good and I cannot change it unfortunately on this sword. On my bow I also have status effect accumulation and then just added power and some luck for better drops. And on my gear I put damage amplification on enemy upon wizardry hit and power gain upon deflecting a critical blow. So a bit more da damage when you use a spell and you quite often deflect critical blows. So you'll get quite a nice damage boost of those special effects. And then the rest of the special effects I've put are just general elemental damage buffs and attack power into the virtues I use the most and some divine beast couch gain to stack with the gain of the set bonus, the three piece bonus. For levels you don't have too much room to play with but you have a little bit of room and this is because you want to keep all your stats within five from the average of your levels and this build is level 150 so the average is a little bit less than 31 30.75 or something like this and that's why I decided to go the highest I can safely in water, fire, since those are my two offensive spells, and wood because it's my weapon buff. Metal is mainly for the spiritual spell sp uh, spirit consumption decrease, and I guess it also gives spirit sustainability. And if you want you can put it a bit higher, take out from something else, and this should, but this should be quite good enough, since if there is a particular boss you want to utilize poison against, you don't even need to reroll any st stats or anything, you can just swap spells at the battle flag before the boss mid-mission and just go with it for the boss fight, because if it's a boss weak to poison, you will pretty easily poison it. And then Earth is also 26 because I only use Quake Bone from Earth. And I would have preferred Light Roll, but the armor I have do not allow it with these stat restrictions. Since if we'd put, let's say, 34 Earth, it's still at 33% uh, proportion. But these are the levels that I'm going with. And now I'm going to show the spells. So, what comes to spells? The spells I've chosen for this are mainly there for status and enhancement, like status accumulation. But I also have one DPS spell which is Unrelenting Frost. Now obviously it's not going to be the strongest with just 34 in water. But that's why I have Ice Stack Power on all my gear to boost the damage quite a bit actually, and especially against weak enemies it still does quite good damage. And it also is pretty good at proccing water, especially in conjunction with the swords. And it is quite a dedication to go for the spell, especially against bosses with hyper armor who are fast. So you can first use your swords to build up some water and then unleash this spell, and oftentimes you can just go in into max negative spirit because you will status proc them but just be careful that you usually want to stop the spell as you get the status proc 
to not be stuck in animation have the boss almost one shot you. I also have another offensive spell which is the Burning Flame Way, I think it's called. And it is insanely good for racking up status build up due to the lingering flames. It also does quite good initial fire build up which is the blast. The initial blast which is like right in front of you. So if you can do it while hugging an enemy it's really good. And it goes good in conjunction with proccing another one status effect. And right after you can spell it a couple times. Actually even three times for neutral. Which is pretty good and that is usually enough to proc the fire debuff on all bosses that aren't outright immune or heavily resistant to it. I also have lightning weapon as a weapon buff which is really is to proc and I feel like when it comes to weapon buffs lightning seems to be the least resisted and I don't know if anything except the big lightning pig with the hammer is like I don't think anything else except now enemies immune to lightning. And then for my last spell is Quakebound, which is really nice against more aggressive bosses because you, every time you parry you do quite decent earth build up and as you can see the timer is going down really slowly at the bottom of my screen. So you don't really have to worry about this one. So if you compare this to a weapon buff, you can see that it lasts quite a bit longer by the looks of it like four times longer even. I forgot to add it initially is a spell I think it's called Elemental Plague it's a metal spell yes so this one is also really good I am not sure about how much it increases but it at least doubles the status accumulation of status effects on enemies as far as I can tell, might be even more. So if it's a boss which is resistant to one of these elements and you like switching up spells, or if it's a boss that you don't parry that often, just you can like switch Quake Bone as an example for it, and you will proc the rest of the elements quite easily. And even enemies, let's say water enemies, can easily be procced with fire when you use that spell. Especially when using Burning Flame Wave. So it is actually a really good spell to use as well. For the Spirit Beast, we'll use Tengshe, the snake one. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. It goes really well with the build. It has increased spirit damage dealt to enemies with negative effects, which enemies will be pretty much constantly have. And this goes really well with the spirit vulnerability on martial arts, so you will be destroying the key of all bosses, pretty much. It has increased status effect accumulation, which is really nice. Increased visual dispel damage, which is also really nice since you'll be using quite a lot of the fire and water spells, so some added damage is always welcome. And as a fourth perk, it has power drop to the target enemy, the severe wizard spell hits. So every time you hit an enemy with a spell, it will take more damage and do less damage due to the special effect on the gloves. No headpiece, I mean. So. All in all, you can put pretty much all the buffs on enemies, and if you need it, using the weapon buff from this gives access to the fifth element, which is poison. Since the, we uh, the spirit attack seldom manages to poison enemies, only enemies weak to it, but it in return applies a lot of the buffs. So it gives you a good choice and due to the increased Divine Beast Gouge gain you'll get it quite often. In longer boss fights you might even be able to use it twice if you had a full gauge at the end of the at the start of the boss fight. So those were all the aspects of the build, the levels, the spells I use, special effects, 
and set bonuses. Now I'm gonna end this video with a showcase of a couple of bosses I fought with this build and it should give quite a good picture of how this build does and why I like this build so much due to the utility and keep in mind I have nowhere nowhere near mastered this game so this should be a pretty average person playing in these clips so if you are one of the average players which obviously most people are then this might reflect a bit how you do but thank you for watching this far and I hope you enjoy the final clips. Thank you, bye.